Hello, and welcome to the 2020 Stockton Buddhist Temple Virtual Fundraiser. My name is Corey Louie. And I'm Chad Shimazaki. We want to start by thanking all of you for joining us today in what we hope will be a fun and instructive day. As we approach 2021, we wanted to share many of our favorite memories related to the New Year's holiday. Corey and I are here to guide you through different food and cultural demonstrations, along with providing you with information about our temple. We also wanna thank all of the individuals who helped to make this wonderful video we have for you. Today's event would not be possible without you. We want to acknowledge that 2020 has been an extremely difficult year for everyone, and we wish you all the best of health and safety right now during such a difficult time. We especially wanna thank all of the amazing workers who are performing essential duties in our community to help us all get through the pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic has affected our temple greatly, and we appreciate the continued support from all of our members. In order to raise money, the temple created a commemorative t-shirt that is available to be purchased online. If you look in the live chat right now, Reverend Candice has posted a link that we can take you to the website where you can purchase a t-shirt and make a, a donation to the temple. Along with supporting our temple and its members, the church wanted to give back to Stockton's community so 5% of all donations made to the church will be donated to Stockton Emergency Food Bank. The food bank greatly needs donations due to the coronavirus pandemic and no donation is too little. We appreciate all of your support. Thank you very much. We've missed seeing everyone at our temple and hope this first slideshow put together by Darlene Bagshaw brings you some comfort and a reminder of where we hope to gather again in the future when it's safe to do so. Thank you to Darlene Bagshaw for putting that amazing slideshow together. We will now introduce our current Reverend Candice Shibata and President Mike Shibata. Before we move on to the next segment, we will have a little more information regarding the donations that can be made to the church. There are three tiers of donations, pine, plum, and bamboo. By donating a certain amount of money, it qualifies you for that tier, and you will receive an extra little gift while supplies last. The first tier, Pine, is for donations of $250 or more, and you will receive a reusable shopping bag. The second tier, Plum, is $500 or more, and you will receive a shopping bag and a Buddhist Women's Association cookbook. The third tier is Bamboo, which is for donations of $1,000 or more, and you will receive a reusable shopping bag, a Buddhist Women's Association cookbook, and a commemorative t-shirt. Once again, these gifts are while supplies last, so make sure you get in your donations as soon as you can. Now let's move on to the next segment we have planned. Reverend Candice Shibata is native of Stockton and attended service at the temple since she was a little girl. She played basketball, was in the Sangha Club in middle school, the Young Buddhist Association in high school, and served as a Dharma school teacher. Reverend Candice says, it is such an honor to serve the community that helped raise her. 
Mike Shibata is the current president of the temple and the son of the late Reverend Teshin Shibata, who also served as a minister in Stockton until his retirement in 1978. Let's take a look at what they have to say. Greetings, everyone. My name is Reverend Candace Shibata. As the minister here at the Buddhist Church of Stockton, I welcome you to our first ever virtual fundraiser. This event is such a, an important fundraiser for the Buddhist Church of Stockton to continue the different services and activities and the community involvement uh, for the people of Stockton and for us to be able to share the Buddha Dharma across the nation and even the world. I'd like to express my sincere appreciation to all of those individuals that made this event possible. And of course, I'd like to thank all of you for taking time out of your schedules to join us and show your support of the Buddhist Church of Stockton, the temple members, and the greater Stockton community. I hope during this time together, you'll be able to learn some of those traditional Japanese uh, cultural aspects that we do uh, during this New Year's time, and also learn about some of the Buddhist tradition that we celebrate during this time as well. So thank you so much in advance for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful time enjoying our show. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. My name is Mike Shibata. As president of the Buddhist Church of Stockton, I welcome and thank you in joining us for this New Year's virtual fundraiser. The Buddhist Church of Stockton is a Jodo Shinshu Buddhist temple based on the teachings of its founder, Shinran Chonin, who lived in Japan from 1173 to 1263. The public is cordially invited to join us in virtual services on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and to our special and Japanese cultural events held throughout the year. As Jodo Shinshu Buddhists, we learn of the impermanence and that everything changes, that we are all interconnected and that we should live life to its fullest every day of the year. It also makes us realize that sometimes we have no control over what happens. With the COVID-19 pandemic, the temple had to cancel many of its usual fundraiser events this year. To compensate for some of the lost revenue, we decided to host this New Year's virtual fundraiser. Deepest gratitude is extended to everyone who participated in any aspect of the production of this event from conception to, to broadcast. We hope you enjoy the educational and entertaining aspects of Jodo Shinshu Buddhism and the Japanese cultural, cultural events that we are being presented today. We extend our sincere appreciation to all of you for taking the time in joining and supporting the Buddhist Church of Stockton in this virtual fundraiser. We hope you continue to stay safe and healthy and we look forward to the day when we can safely meet together in person. Lastly, we extend our hope and best wishes that you have a harmonious new year filled with good health, peace, and love. Thank you. Hi, everyone. This is Reverend Candace Shibata. Thank you so much for tuning in to our first ever New Year's fundraiser. This fundraiser is not only important to the Buddhist Church of Stockton and its members, but it will also help and support the members of the Stockton and San Joaquin County community as well. 5%, up to $3,000, will be donated to the Stockton and San Joaquin County Emergency Food Bank. This food bank has been fighting hunger for 52 years. In 2019 alone, 124,042 individuals were fed. In addition, in 2019, 3,991,000 pounds of food were served as well. So this day, we not only thank you for helping and supporting the Buddhist Church of Stockton, but we also thank you for thinking about and supporting the members of the Stockton community as well. Thank you so much for your continued support and we wish you a very safe and happy new year. Thank you, Reverend Candace and Mike. 
One of my fondest memories of growing up at this temple was attending Sunday school. I don't mean to brag, but at one point in my life, I did hold an 18 year perfect attendance award for Sunday school. I never got to 18 years. I think I capped out somewhere around 10. Although students aren't able to meet in person every Sunday, our Dharma School program is still available via Zoom calls after online Sunday services. Dharma School is a Buddhist educational program that gives students an opportunity to learn more about Buddhism and our temple. Carrie Wong, the current superintendent of Dharma School, has put together a Dharma talk on the Bon Show, the large bell outside our temple. With the help of Carrie, Reverend Candice Shibata, Dharma School student Emily Wong, and former YBA advisor Tiffany Shibata, we will now take a deeper look into this iconic structure that rests outside our temple. If you were wondering where all the sounds came from, you guessed right. It's coming from that bell, or also known as a boncho, located on the temple grounds, in front of the church hondo, and near the rock garden. It is the first thing one would see when entering the church gates. Let's take a closer look at the boncho. It is also referred to as an Indian bell, because bells like this originate from India. These large bells could range from 4 to 10 or more feet tall and weigh as much as 29 tons. It is suspended in a separate bell tower called a shoro. The most famous bell was one which hung in the Jetavana Garden of Shakyamuni Buddha, which was said to have weighed 50 tons and whose sound reminded all who heard it of the impermanence of all things. The largest boncho can be found at the Chion-in Temple in Kyoto, Japan, weighing 29 tons. Even though the boncho is weathered with time and stays out in the seasonal elements all year long, it continues to be a beautiful sight to see. The boncho was widely used in China, Korea, and Japan to summon followers to the temple and also to mark the time of the day. It is struck just above the outside lip with a section of a tree trunk. Traditionally, it was rung 10 times in the morning, 7 times in the afternoon, and 7 times in the evening. In villages and farming communities, ringing the bonsho often marked the hours of work and rest. In Japan especially, the sound of the bonsho came to be regarded as the voice of the Buddha. Following World War II, the Buddhist Church of Stockton was required to relocate due to freeway construction in 1965. On February 14, 1967, 15 acres where our current temple site is was purchased for construction. On June 16, 1968, a groundbreaking ceremony was conducted for the new temple complex, which included the hondo, meeting rooms, education building, gym, social hall, and the two ministers' parsonages. These facilities were dedicated during services held on June 28th and 29th of 1969. The bell tower that the Boncho hangs from was dedicated on June 27th, 1976, through generous donors Mrs. Chiku Nakashima and Ms. Sanae Nakashima. The bell is able to call our church its home.
A Joya Air New Year's Eve service is held on December 31st in the evening. After service, everyone looks forward to getting that once in a year opportunity to ring in the New Year with the Bon Show. Traditionally, the Bon Show is rung 108 times. Don't worry, you don't need to ring it that many times. One or two times is plenty. Here's Reverend Shibata to tell us why the Bon Show is traditionally rung 108 times. Hi everyone, my name is Reverend Candace Shibata. It's my pleasure to work with the Dharma School to talk about the Bonsho, or the large bell that's right at the entrance of our temple. Many times I get asked, why do we hit the bell 108 times at the end of the New Year's Eve service? Let me explain how we get to this particular number. First, we consider the ways in which human beings interact with the world around us. This includes sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, and consciousness. We take this number six and multiply it by three, which represents pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral feelings. This equals 18. And we multiply this by two because these feelings are attached to pleasure or detached from pleasure. This equals 36. And this number is the number of passions manifested by oneself. We multiply 36 by three, which represents the past, present, and the future. And this, my friends, equals 108 worldly passions. So I hope that this small bit of information will help you in learning about the Bon Show and why we hit the bell 108 times collectively together. I hope that in the near future, we'll be able to continue this temple tradition in 2021. Please continue to stay safe and well, and Happy New Year. If you have a child that is interested in learning more about Buddhism and the Japanese culture, our Dharma school would be a perfect fit for you. Maybe one day they can also show off their 18-year perfect attendance. Award. Okay, 10's, 10's not too shabby either. For more information about joining can be found at the link Reverend Candace has posted in the live chat below. Anyone who knows me knows that I love food, especially Japanese food. And when I think of the holiday season, traditional Japanese food always comes to mind. Same here, Chad. One of the best traditions of our church is having Toshi Koshi Soba made by Mrs. Kimiko Ishihara after our New Year's Eve services. The Ishihara family have been lifelong temple members, and Mrs. Ishihara is not only instrumental in the maintenance of our beautiful altar, but also, also for her soba, and I very much so thank her for that. For our next segment, get ready to take some notes as Mrs. Ishihara will be walking us through on how she prepares her famous Toshikoshi soba. Today, the Ishihara family is here to show you step-by-step step how to make Toshikoshi Soba. This is a two-person serving. The topping ingredients are all to your preference, but today we are using green onions, eggs, and ginger. Tempura vegetables, bok choy, shiitake mushrooms, and kamaboko, also known as fish cake. After preparing your toppings, you'll want to cook your soba noodles according to your package instructions. Today, we are using two bunches of soba noodles. Now, we will rinse our noodles with cold water to get rid of the starch. You may want to do this a couple of times. Now that your noodles are done, we will be moving on to the broth. 
We will boil two cups of water and stir in other ingredients, which are one fourth cup of tsuyu soup base, One tablespoon of memi. And one fourth tablespoon of kombu dashi, which is optional. Lower your heat to simmer and set aside. Note this recipe is a lighter version. You may want to add a little more memi or soup base to suit your taste. Just before serving, you'll dip your noodles in hot water. Drain. And place them in your serving bowl. Add your toppings and serve immediately with hot broth. Now you can enjoy your delicious Toshi Koshi Soba. <laughs> wow, Mrs. Ishihara, that looks so good. I might have to go make myself some soba after we're done with this video, Corey. Traditionally, one can enjoy a bowl of Toshi Koshi Soba after the New Year's Eve service, but unfortunately, we won't be able to do that this year. The New Year's service has always felt extra special because it was a farewell to the previous year. It allowed us to reflect on everything that happened in our lives that year. We encourage all of you to still reflect on the previous year from the comfort and safety of your own homes. Thanks, Corey and Chad. As our host mentioned, we welcome you to show your support for the Buddhist Church of Stockton by purchasing a commemorative 2020 t-shirt designed by Mr. Lane Imada. This design and slogan, Stockton Sangha Samurai Strong, is an ode to our temple's basketball team's name, Shogun. Despite the difficulties everyone has faced due to this pandemic, the community, our Sangha of the Buddhist Church of Stockton, remains strong and supportive of one another. 
We hope that you two remain supportive of each other and continue to stay safe and well. You can purchase a t-shirt on our fundraiser site, bcsfundraiser.square.site, or you can print a mailable order form and mail it to the temple. Thanks so much. When I reflect on 2020, one good thing I will always remember is getting to spend extra time with my parents and brother due to the shutdowns that I would not have been able to under normal circumstances. Now more than ever, we need to cherish spending time with our loved ones. Well said, Chad. For me, the holiday season is always my favorite time of the year because it gave, it gave me a chance to relax and visit with all the relatives I only get to see a couple times a year. My family always had a big gathering to celebrate the new year, but unfortunately, we won't be able to do that this year. We would like to take this moment to remind everyone about the commemorative t-shirts for today's event and the link to purchase and donate to the church is listed below in the live chat. And remember, 5% will be donated to the Stockton Emergency Food Bank. We will now hear from Stephanie Doy, a former Dharma School student about Shochiku Bai Centerpiece on our altar and the memories that she has made with her family during New Year's. Shochiku Bai. Shochiku Bai is a three part word that translates to mean pine, bamboo, and plum. Its origin is found in the Chinese phrase Saikon Sanyo, which means the three fellows of winter. What this refers to is how all three of the Shochikubai clams are strong enough to withstand the cold against the cold. But in Japan, the phrase developed in its own unique way and in time came to describe symbols of good fortune. The late Mr. Kenji Takauchi, original owner of Charterway Flores, left behind a legacy in creating a beautiful Shochikubai arrangement for our temple, which is displayed on the Oenaijin, or altar, during our New Year's Day service. He had also explained the in-depth significance of each element of the Shochikubai to Mr. George Kanako, the second owner of Charterway Florist. George continued creating beautiful Shochikubai and eventually passed down what he had learned to the current owners, George and Mario Pedragosa. Mr. Takauchi's great passion in promoting Japanese culture in the Stockton community has been carried on for over 50 years. You may remember him as a master of ceremonies during our annual Obon Festival. The following is Mr. Takauchi's personal interpretation of Shochikubai as explained to Mr. George Kaneko. Shochikubai, obtaining true happiness by achieving complete appreciation for pine, longevity, endurance, bamboo, vitality, durability, flexibility, and plum, renewal, purity, perseverance. The five petals of plum essential for good life are water, fire, wood, metal, and earth. With all three elements, you need to maintain balance and harmony. Each element must be in balance as a standalone presentation, and yet combined with all three must exhibit the same. We hope we can all gather at the temple next year on New Year's Eve 2021 to see the beautiful Shochikubai, ring the boncho, the large outdoor bell, and enjoy a hot bowl of Toshikoshi soba. Last year was the first time I had attended the New Year's Eve service with my obachan, Aiko Yaki. In the previous years, I'd attended the New Year's Day service. I especially enjoyed Sensei's message, as well as sharing a hot bowl of soba with my obachan, my sister, and our friends. I look forward to a time when it is safe to gather once again at the temple. Hearing about everyone's experience with the church has made me think about all the memories I've made here. I promise not all of my memories are related to food, but one of my favorite events we took a part in was the annual mochi sale. I remember pounding rice into the mochi making machine, brushing cornstarch off the finished mochi, and eating all of them after Dharma school. I always remember the look on my mom's face when I would try to get into her car without dusting myself <laughs> off. Though everyone may not have an industrial mochi making machine at our home, 
Our very own Ruby Kato is here to show everyone how they can make their own mochi with just a few ingredients and a little bit of work. Hello everyone. I'm going to teach you how to make kagami mochi for a New Year's Day celebration. You'll need to get mochi ko, katakuri ko or potato starch, or if you don't have that, you can use corn starch and water. That's all you need. So you need a microwavable dish. I'm using a py Pyrex pie pan. And first you um, put the one cup of mochi ko in the pan. And then you slowly pour three quarters of a cup of water into the mixture and stir as you go along. So very slowly add the water. Make sure all the water is absorbed. After you put in the three quarters cup of water, and it should be a smooth consistency, just spread it throughout the plate. Okay. And then we're gonna microwave this for two minutes, two and a half minutes, 2.30. Okay, it's just about ready. Depending on your the power on your microwave, um, you should cook it for at least two minutes, but up to two and a half, not more than two and a half minutes. So you take your spoon, and you can tell by the consistency, it looks like mochi. And some of the parts that are white, it should be translucent in color and very sticky. So just keep stirring it until it's all mixed. You're gonna flour your board with a potato starch or corn starch. And then spread it around. And then you take your mochi mixture and put it right onto the floured board. Next, you could um, flour, put flour on your hands or your um, gloves, kind of roll it a little bit, and then you want to separate it into two pieces, the larger one and a smaller one. So one a little bit larger than the other. Next, you put your mochi, the large one, in your hand and pull the edges toward the center and keep, as you're turning it, keep moving it toward the center. The bottom is very hot, that's why I'm put wearing gloves. But just keep working it in the middle. And then toward the end, you just pinch the inside and then turn it around and then form your circle until it's the right size that you want. Okay, set that aside, that's your large piece. And then the next one, if you think it's too large, you can take some off and do the same. And bring the sides to the center and keep turn as you turn. You might have to use a little bit more starch and pinch the, in, um, the bottom there, and then turn it around and form it. If you think it's too large for the, uh, the bottom one, then, then make it a little higher. Okay, that should do it. Okay, next, after it's cooled, you just Pick up the large piece and with the pastry brush, brush off the excess powder and place it on a dish, small dish. Then you take the smaller piece and 
brush off the top, the sides a little bit, and that goes right on top. And to finish it off, you take a tangerine or mecan with leaves on it, makes a ni nice pretty um, presentation, and place it right on top. And there is your New Year's Day kagami mochi. I know that mochi was intended to be a decoration, but now I have a fat craving for some. Thank you, Ruby. Before we move on to the next segment, we will have a little more information regarding the donations that can be made to the church. There are three tiers of donations, pine, plum, and bamboo. By donating a certain amount of money, it qualifies you for that tier, and you will receive an extra little gift while supplies last. The first tier, pine, is for donations of $250 or more, and you will receive a reusable shopping bag. The second tier, Plum, is $500 or more, and you will receive a shopping bag and a Buddhist Women's Association cookbook. The third tier is Bamboo, which is for donations of $1,000 or more, and you will receive a reusable shopping bag, a Buddhist Women's Association cookbook, and a commemorative t-shirt. Once again, these gifts are while supplies last, so make sure you get in your donations as soon as you can. Now let's move on to the next segment we have planned. Corey? I'm not sure if you know this about college version of me, but I've become quite the cook. Is that so? Yes, I've made homemade pizza and pasta from scratch, weird flex, I know. But I've also learned some new Japanese recipes as well, including chicken katsu and homemade udon. If you are interested at home in other Japanese recipes, the Stockton Buddhist Women's Association has their own cookbook for sale. Please inquire with the temple office to order. The contact information is listed below in the chat. I think now would be an appropriate time to switch to another topic other than food because I'm getting a little too hungry talking about it right now. Same, Corey. Why don't we send it over to Kay Freeman and learn how to make a Kimikomi doll? The history of the Kanigamo style, Mataro Kimikomi doll, date back 280 years ago in Kyoto at the Kamigamo Shrine in Japan, Tadashige Takahashi, he, who worked at the shrine, made the first doll. He carved the doll's body out of wood and covered them from the fabric of old priest rope, tucking the fabric in the grooves. Stockton Mataro Kimekomi doll class was established by Isako Wasano in October 2016. Each class at the temple is held on the second Saturday of each month. 10 months out of 12 months, fall and spring classes from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Often people ask where we get the dolls. After you choose the doll you want from the catalog and newsletters, we purchased the doll from the Mataro Doll Academy in Tokyo, Japan. Doll kit include head, body, hands, fabric, accessories, depending on your choice of doll to complete the doll. Also, people ask, if sewing is involved, no, sewing is involved at all. We use tools. This is a tool to prepare the doll. It's a tool for tacking the fabric, scissors, file. We also sand the body and patching. I, I made this uh, ox wishy is next year. Huh? I have not completed it yet. I have to put eyes in it, on it. Next one is glue. Glue 
is white powder, mm -hmm. made out of made out of the rice, glue from the yellow tube. Now this glue includes the preservative. Keep it keep the insect uh, to the dolls. So white powder, glue from yellow tube mixed together. So I will demonstrate. So I, this is a water and this is a Kimi Kami Bella. Put it in the glue to moisture the glue so that more pliable. And then I pick up glue and put the glue in direction of the grooves. There's the fabric. And make sure you clean up the tip of the then you put it in carefully in the direction of the groove. I didn't put the glue all the way around, just just demonstrating this section only. If you have uh, excessive fabric, then you trim with the scissors and then tuck again. Like that and then go all the way around it. So you cover entire body with the fabric with the tool and to complete the doll. My goal is to introduce the art of Japanese doll making and hopefully young generation will carry on the tradition by reaching out to them. So today I show you the process of Kimikomi doll making in the video. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Thank you, Kay Freeman, for that amazing demonstration on how to make a Kimikomi doll. Did you get my Christmas gift, Corey? I made one and sent it to you. Is that what that was? Um, I think I thought it was a chew toy for my dog. <laughs> it sounds like you need to take Kay's doll making class one more time. She happens to be a local teacher and is accepting new students to her classes when everything reopens. I'll stick to cooking. One new skill at a time. Do you hear that? Hear what? It's time for another food topic. Yes, in this video, Dr. Alan Kawaguchi will be demonstrating how to cut sashimi properly, a traditional New Year's food. My mouth is watering already. Take it away, doctor. Happy holidays. I am Dr. Alan Kawaguchi and tonight, I'm gonna show you how to cut sashimi. So, first thing you need is a good knife. So this is a Japanese knife, uh, long and narrow, uh, but certainly if you don't have one of those, you can certainly use an American knife as long as it's long and narrow and make sure it's very sharp. You may need to sharpen it before, we, uh, before you use it. But since I have my Japanese knife, I'm gonna use this tonight. Now, when you go to the fish store, you gotta have a nice fresh piece of maguro, like this one here. This is yellow, uh, yellow fin tuna. Can't get blue fin tuna around here. So this is yellow fin tuna. Um, best place to get it, in my opinion, is Oto's in Sacramento. Uh, this is about a, not, not quite two pound piece. Uh, first thing you wanna do is, you wanna get rid of all the moisture. You wanna wipe it down. And you, do want, you don't want to handle it too much because you don't want the, the sashimi to get heated up. So just clean off all the moisture like so. Now you can see the skins on there and see this uh, black part. This is considered the bloodline. So first thing you have to do is take the bloodline off because you don't want to eat this. So 
you basically just get in there and just shave this bloodline away as best you can, like so. And that basically gets thrown away. Um, we'll deal with the uh, skin later. Um, so now you have this piece of uh, uh, maguro, maguro. And as you can see, uh, this tip portion here is a side that's closest to the spine. And this is like called the akami. And so first thing you wanna do is, if you have a piece of fish like this, and you can see the skin side here, you wanna cut the akami off, all basically one knife breadth uh, deep. So basically you take this knife and just cut it straight across, like so. Now, you have a block of fish like this. Now the next thing is, we want to either cut another piece or two, about an inch uh, depth, and you can either do it, cut it this way across, or some people like to cut it this way, okay, and have blocks that way. So today, I'm gonna basically cut it across this way. So I'm gonna basically cut this in half, pretty much. So we're gonna cut right here. Like so. Okay, so now I have a block of sashimi. Now the bottom part here, you have to look at the very bottom. Now there's a uh, piece of tendon or fascia. It's, it's the sinew here. Thick sinew, you, wanna, you don't want to uh, uh, present it in, as part of sashimi because you know, it's, it's kind of tough. So this part here, what I do is, I'll just cut through here, very carefully like so, and then get down towards the skin. And you can leave a little bit of the uh, flesh onto the skin if you need to. But basically, you cut this off and you make another block. Kind of like so. Okay, so now I got three blocks. Now, this leftover uh, piece of sashimi is useful. You know, don't, this doesn't go, have to go to waste. What you do is you take a spoon and you can start scraping quite easily the meat off of this portion here, okay? Just like this. And this here, you could start, you could mix it with uh, green onions and sriracha, and basically you have spicy tuna. Or if you just wanted to uh, have just tuna that's uh, uh, minced. You, there's other recipes that you could make with this, but what I like to do is I like to try to get this all out of there so use as much of the fish as possible if you can. Just kind of sometimes you sometimes you could lift up the uh, sinew, the white membrane there to kind of just get in there and just kind of go after the sashimi fish portion that's edible, like so. Okay, so now this portion here, you're left with the skin. Right, that gets thrown away. Okay, so now you have this nice shredded sashimi, which all you gotta do now is just put it into a bowl, like so. And let me just quickly wash my hands. And the rest is all up to taste. You can take a little soy sauce, Throw a little in there. Take some sriracha. You can use more if you like it hotter. Take some scallions. Again, it's all to taste. You get in there and just mix it all up. And you could just season it to taste, and there you go. You got yourself some spicy tuna. This one looks has too much, maybe more shoyu than I would normally like, but then you could always add more sriracha to it. You could always take the shoyu out and not put it in there. Some people also like to place a little bit of mayonnaise in there to make it a little creamy, but basically you got a little spicy tuna with a little shoyu. Like I said, you don't have to put the shoyu in there, but let's take a taste of this. Mmm, I like it. So, that's how you make um, spicy tuna with the scraps. Now, let's get back to the 
Akatsuna itself. So the Akami here, as you can see, already has a slant where you can use to cut the fish with. Now the, the object here is make sure you have to cut against the grain, okay? So this one here, since this is already kind of set up for me to cut, I'm gonna start this way. And you take a nice thin stroke through it like so. Now, the way this is done is you wanna start with the uh, a blade nearest the handle on the fish, okay? And then what you do is you take one good stroke and you cut down and you end up with one stroke, okay? You wanna cut them fairly thin. You don't, want to, you, you don't want to go back and forth with a knife. That's the key to cutting sashimi, right? You don't want to do this. You want to, take a, you want to start here at the, at the hilt. Take a nice, smooth stroke down. Smooth stroke down. And there you go. Mmm, this looks delicious. Guess what I'm having for dinner tonight. Yummy, yummy. Okay, so here... And when you get down to something like this, you may have to improvise a little bit because you know you have this triangular piece. So do what you can. Sometimes you have to, you know, you may want to make some chunks this way too, obviously, to use the whole fish. There we go. So here you go. Now we'll leave this here. Now, this is basically a block of sashimi like what you may buy at the store. It comes in this uh, styrofoam package. They, they may look like this, okay? Now this, what you gotta do is you gotta learn know how to cut the fish in the correct way. And that's pretty simple. You have to have to see which way the, uh, uh, the lines are going. And again, you wanna cut parallel to the, you wanna cut parallel to the, uh, sorry, excuse me. You wanna cut perpendicular to the, uh, the lines. So, I'm going to say, if I look at this fish here, I'm probably going to, you know, I need to cut in this fashion here. Probably should do it. Mm-hmm. That's perpendicular. I mean, yeah, you want to cut perpendicular to the lines. So if I cut this way, and look, look on both sides, okay? So if I cut this way, looks like, actually, I'm cutting parallel here. So I need to cut, probably, I need to cut this way, okay? Because you want to be perpendicular to these lines, you want to be perpendicular to these lines. So I'm going to start cutting this fish this way. So I'm going to, and uh, let's see, I'm going to go this way here. Here we go. And so I'm left-handed, so we're going to cut this way, right here, just like this. Okay, again, one smooth stroke. Get through the whole fish. Okay, and there you go. A perpendicular Staying perpendicular. Okay, thank you. And if these pieces are too big for you, you could certainly cut them in half if you want to serve them that way. You know, that's a fine tuning you could do. But that's, and you could do the same thing with the other block of fish. Um, for sake of time, this is Toro. In my family, who are descendants of fishermen, we love what's called old Toro. This is the most fatty. At uh, Odo's today, they didn't have any old Toro. So I had to go with Chu Toro, which is still good. It's the belly part of the fish, okay? A lot of people don't like this part because it's too, it's, it's quite uh, uh, fishy. It's, it's, it's a fatty portion, but uh, people that like sashimi think of this as the filet mignon of the tuna. Okay, so again, the way you cut this is, you gotta find out which way the, uh, uh, the fascia is going, okay? And you wanna cut perpendicular to it. So you sure, you, I certainly don't wanna cut this way. I think this way would be okay, but let me take a look. If I cut this way and uh, let's see, against the grain, or let's see if I go here. Yes, that'll be fine because the grain on the other side is is going the other way. Okay, so again, a little diagonal. There you go. And one swat, one fell swoop. 
There we go. Against the grain. Against the grain. some pieces here and one final cut against the grain there we go all right now now that we have this I'm gonna save these uh, for later for sake of time what you want to do is you want to get a plate perhaps with some greens in it just for uh, color and one way of arranging this once you have your sashimi cut Arrange them like so, the pieces, to make it more presentable, okay? Here you go, here you go. And these are a little bit fatter, so I'll just cut them a little bit in half. You know. here that I had cut up earlier. Ooh, this looks delicious. I better have a piece. That's the one thing about being the uh, sashimi slicer, the chef. Sometimes you get scraps and they go into your stomach. During the holidays, my cousin hosts a New Year's party and I bring fish I got I have a, a market in LA where I get my fish from and I'll bring maybe three pounds of the uh, red maguro and I'll bring maybe two pounds of the total that's kind of my uh, donation to the uh, party and I'll, I'll be there cutting the fish and I got a couple of my cousins kids that sit there waiting for scraps to take so it's really a funny fun experience but here we are so basically That's the way you cut sashimi. I think after this is over, I'm going to have to go on DoorDash and place an order for some Japanese food. Same, Corey. With the most recent shutdown, small businesses everywhere are suffering and can use as much support as possible. I know I'll be showing some. Hi, everyone. This is Reverend Candace Shibata again. As our co-host Corey and Chad said, your donation is never too small to make a huge impact. Your donation today not only helps to support the Buddhist Church of Stockton and its members, but it will also help the members of our greater Stockton community as well. 5% up to $3,000 of donations will be going towards the Stockton Emergency Food Bank. The Stockton Emergency Food Bank offers a food pantry to the members of the greater Stockton area. Some of the items that they offer are seasonal fruits and vegetables, rice, pasta, dairy products, meat products, canned fruits and vegetables, bread and peanut butter. This is just a sample list of the items that they're able to provide to the members of the Stockton community with your support. So thank you so much again for your kind Donna, your selfless giving to support the Buddhist Church of Stockton and the greater Stockton area as well. Thank you. One thing I'm looking forward to in 2020 is it's the year of the ox, which happens to be my birth year. Our next segment <laughs> will be an origami demonstration done by Mike Shibata on how to fold a paper ox. But before we get to that, we are going to screen share a quick trivia question that appeared on Jeopardy a few years back. Take it away, Susan. Our next topic is the Year of the Ox, in which you will be shown how to make an origami Year of the Ox greeting card. But first, we will begin this segment by screen sharing some graphics with you. This year, the world lost game show host Alex Trebek. 
He was the genial host of Jeopardy for 37 years. How many of you watched the show on September 20th, 2018? On that date, the final Jeopardy category was folklore. The clue was in legend, he called all the animals together, but only 12 came, including a rat and a dragon. Do you know what the correct response is? You are correct if you replied, Who is Buddha? None of the three contestants knew the correct response. There are a couple of versions of Chinese folklore that lead to why the 12 animals of the Chinese zodiac is as it is. The one referenced in the Final Jeopardy clue says that Buddha summoned all the animals to come to him before he departed to say farewell, and only 12 animals of the current zodiac arrived to do so. As a reward, he named a year after each animal in the order they arrived. Rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, sheep, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. 2021 is the year of the ox. People born in the year of the ox are said to hold conservative and traditionalistic personalities by being strong, reliable, fair, and conscientious, inspiring confidence in others. They impress people with an image of endurance, honesty, and diligence. They are also calm, patient, methodical, and can be trusted. Although they say little, they can be very opinionated. They believe strongly in themselves, but are also stubborn and hate to fail or be challenged. In the next video, Mike Shibata, current president of the Buddhist Church of Stockton, will show you how to make an origami ox, which can be glued together onto the front of a blank New Year greeting card that you can make and send to a friend. Hello. Today I will show you how to make a Origami Ox uh, New Year's greeting card. It's a horizontal card with the fold on top. You will need a 6 by 6 sheet of origami paper and a half sheet of 8.5 uh, by 11 cardstock. We will begin with the folding of the ox. Take your um, origami paper with the back side up Fold it into a triangle. Open it up and fold the triangle on the opposite corner. Open it up and from one corner you make the two sides come into the center. Open the paper up and do the opposite to the opposite corner. Open the paper up again and from this intersection bring the corner up together fold the center paper down and then fold it up do the same thing to the opposite side, bringing the paper up.
press it down from the center and do the uh, fold it to the opposite. Bring both of them together and from turn it the paper over from this center crease you're going to fold it into your half. From this uh, point, fold the back side up to about 85 degrees. Open the top and reverse the fold so it goes into the center. From this point, it would go all the way, fold it in half to this top center piece, center point. Open the paper up, and then from this tip, fold it down. Open the paper up again, and from this intersection to this point, you would make a fold. Bring the paper down together and then make a fold down. Flip the paper over and do the same thing on this side. Point goes to the top. Open it up from the point, bring it down. Open it back up from the intersection to the tip. Make a fold. Bringing the paper together and fold it down. Turn the paper over, and then we'll begin the front half of the um, ox. Again, at this intersection, bring the tip back over to the top point. Again, you open it up from the top and reverse the fold that you just made. Then we form the head from one, one third down, leaving the two thirds on the bottom. You reverse the fold. forming the neck or the uh, neck portion of the ox. Again, open it up and you reverse the fold making the front head part of the, the face part of the head. Make sure that your horn extends behind um, the back of the head. From this point, you make a small uh, horn to the tip. So you make this fold like this, turn the paper over, and do the same thing to the other side. Then you make the you make a fold on the tip of the horn so that it makes a small curve upwards. To finish it off, take open up the back end 
and from the tip here bring the fold down. This forms the back legs. So you have the front legs, the back legs, and you have a finished product. You take your paper, fold it in half, And with the top on the fold, the fold on the top, take your glue stick and on the front portion of the body and then on the side, put your glue and attach your folded ox onto the paper. So it didn't take. And there you have your completed um, Origami Ox uh, New Year's greeting card. Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. Thank you again to Mike Shibata for that thorough walkthrough on how to create an Origami Ox. I used to make Origami Balloons, but I think Mike might have me beat on that one. Yeah, maybe you can make an Origami Mochi or a piece of a Magadol. I think I'm gonna need to watch that video one more time because uh, <laughs> I kind of lost track and my ox didn't turn out too well. But in case anyone is joining us late, we would like to remind you to donate and purchase our 2020 Stockton Buddhist Temple virtual fundraiser t-shirt for today's event. The link, the link to both is listed in the live chat below. Hi everyone, this is Reverend Candace Shibata again, reminding you that you can purchase a 2020 commemorative Buddhist Church of Stockton t-shirt for only $23. Pre-orders have begun and will continue until January 4th. You can return a hard copy order form to the temple office, or you can visit our site, bcsfundraiser.square.site. Shirts are expected to be ready for distribution in February, and we will have a drive through pickup at that time, or you can ask for flat rate shipping of $8 per order. These t-shirts have our slogan, Stockton Sangha Samurai Strong, and it's an ode to our temple's basketball team's name, Shogun. We hope that through these t-shirts, we can remind all of you to remain safe and strong in the new year. Thanks so much for your support. And again, 5% will be donated to the Stockton Emergency Food Bank. We will now hear from Miche Baroga about Stockton Kendall Dojo and watch her in a Kendall team match against Germany. Enjoy. Hello everyone, my name is Michie Baroga. My father is Tony Cabral, and we are the sensei or head instructors at the Stockton Kendo Dojo, which is actually a satellite of the Oakland Kendo Dojo. And I am currently a Yondan, which is a fourth degree or equivalent to a fourth degree black belt. Um, I've actually been practicing for 20 years now. So I've started when I was 11 years old um, I have competed three times nationally and twice internationally at the World Kendo Championships, um, once in Brazil and the other one was in Italy. Um, and I've learned a lot through Kendo. Um, growing up, my parents were very, um, they're wonderful parents. They taught us, you know, a lot about discipline and whatever you want to do, put your mind to it and you can accomplish it. Uh, but the main thing was to never quit. You know, if you really wanted something bad enough, when you start it, you you finish it, uh, no matter how, how hard it gets. And Kendo actually just reiterated that for me, um, especially when I started training for the Kendo World Championships. Um, it took a lot of discipline and hard work. Uh, definitely wasn't always easy, and there were days that I wanted to quit. Um, I was probably only... 17, 18 when I started training for my first world championship um, and I was going to the University of Pacific here in Stockton. Um, so that was definitely a challenge uh, dealing with studies and training because I was having to fly down to Los Angeles about twice um, every month or so 
for uh, over a year actually and leading up to the championships um, a few months before I actually had to go down every other weekend and eventually every weekend to practice there um, and so that definitely took a toll on me mentally and physically but growing up with such strong parents um, they taught me a lot about you know just give it your all and it, everything will be worth it and it definitely was um, when you're walking into a competition like that uh, everything is worth it, you know, and the feeling is just, it's indescribable, you know, um, emotion floods over you and you're being there with your teammates and everybody who worked hard with you through blood, sweat and tears, you know, um, it, it definitely is a wonderful, wonderful feeling. So that gave me an experience that I will never forget. And I probably could never have ever in my life again. So I'm very thankful. Um, for that experience and I'm very thankful for the teammates that um, I competed alongside with and also the people that helped me get there um, because I definitely couldn't have done it without them and also my parents, um, family and who has, uh, have supported me. So um, it's, it's taught me a lot about discipline, uh, never give up and just things that I think that you should implement also into your life, um, positivity, those things that especially, you know, nowadays, we it's just filled with so much uncertainty. And I think that having that strong uh, mentality and never give up and push yourself, you know, I think during these times, it's definitely something that I'm glad that I had that experience. So I'm very thankful for that um, and thankful for the team uh, participants and Kenshi that I practice with now at the Soft and Kendo Dojo. We have some wonderful strong players there. Uh, we currently practice on Saturday mornings outside. Um, and of course, once it's safe, we're hoping to get back inside the gym. Um, if you want further information on that, you can contact my father, Tony Cabral, at Stockton Kendo Dojo at yahoo.com. Or you can check out our um, website, www.stocktonkendodojo.com. And now I'm going to actually play the video from my um, team match I was chicken and I we were fighting Germany so you can go ahead and watch that if you like um, I am the player that has the white tag on uh, her back so go ahead and check it out and I thank you and I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season stay safe stay healthy bye <laughs>
Thank you to Miche Broga. If you're interested in learning more about Stockton Kendo Dojo, we'll be posting links in the live chat. That was super exciting. Do you think they have fantasy Kendall? I don't think they have that, Chad. Um, <laughs> but we will now hear from Render Reverend Candice Shibata and Darlene Bagshaw with some acknowledgments for today's video. Hi, everybody. As the resident minister here at the Buddhist Church of Stockton, I have the pleasure of being able to teach so many wonderful tenants of Buddhism. And those tenants are obviously here in our video today. One of those major tenants of Buddhism that we talk about is dana, selfless giving. And because of so many people's dana or selfless giving, this video has come to fruition. I'd first like to thank Mrs. Darlene Bagshaw for all of your enthusiasm and your effort in regards to planning and allowing this video fundraiser come to fruition, as I mentioned. I'd also like to thank Darlene for the wonderful video slideshow in the very beginning of our program that really features all of the beauty of our temple here in Stockton. I'd also like to thank Chad Shimozaki and Corey Louie for being our wonderful and very energetic co-hosts and without you, this program wouldn't be possible. Also, I'd like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to my dear friend, Mr. Bradley Menda from the Berkeley Buddhist Temple. Bradley is currently the temple president and because of his efforts and so many other temple members, they have utilized technology to be able to share their messages and share the Dharma with not only the Berkeley community, but worldwide. And because of Bradley and the Berkeley Buddhist Temple, we're able to utilize their equipment to be able to stream to not only YouTube and Facebook, but to be able to reach so many people that um, we haven't been able to do so before. So Bradley, thank you so much. Also, I'd like to extend my sincere appreciation to Susan Bruni for all of her expertise in video editing and audio um, editing as well. And without Susan's help, this video uh, presentation of our virtual fundraiser would not have been um, successful. So thank you, Susan, for all of your expertise in allowing us to be able to do this virtual fundraiser. On behalf of the Buddhist Church of Stockton, I'd like to thank all those who worked so diligently to form the program you viewed today. Our temple president, Mike Shibata, from the Dharma School, Reverend Candace Shibata, Tiffany Shibata, Emily Wong, and Carrie Wong. From the Buddhist Women's Association, Kay Freeman, Kimiko Ishihara, and Ruby Kato. From the Stockton Bukyo Taiko, Susan Bruni, Kiono Kishi, Chris Kubo, and Debbie Nakade. From the Stockton Kendo Dojo, Michia Baroga, Anthony Cabral, and Christine Cabral and from the Young Adult Buddhist Association, Dr. Alan Kawaguchi, and of course, all the technical staff to support them along the way. As the resident minister here at the Buddhist Church of Stockton, it's such an honor and a pleasure to be serving this community. Many of you might know that I grew up right here in this particular temple. So many of my childhood memories include coming to the temple, attending service, playing basketball, and meeting my lifelong friends. And it's because of those particular memories, the involvement of my family, especially my parents and my grandparents, that has really led me to want to become a minister and serve my temple community. 
And I'd like to especially thank all of those donors, all of the people that have really supported our temple in regards to supporting the events, the activities, the children, and all of the Sangha members to be able to come to this particular temple to listen and to receive the Buddha Dharma, the teachings of the Buddha and Shinran Shonin. So I would like to, again, express my heartfelt gratitude to the past uh, donors and all of your contributions and all of the uh, people that support our temple today and all of you for your kind donations that is never too small to make a big impact. Thank you. Speaking from the heart, I think about all the efforts of countless Komon, our temple elders, temple presidents, temple leaders from all areas, and all the reverends who have served here in the past. They are truly why we are together today, all, albeit virtually. When we return in person, take a moment to read the names of those who graciously gave of their heart and soul, be it as a the resident minister or a temple president. I have never had the opportunity to meet Reverend Teshin Shibata, but through his detailed efforts with Reverend Laverne Sasaki, we have this beautiful Onaijin you see behind me. How grateful we are to all those who measured, handcrafted, shipped piece by piece from Japan to be re reassembled as we all enjoy today. I did not grow up in Stockton, but this Sangha has most certainly become my family. I hope you will support our efforts to be able to continue to thrive and share the Dharma, now virtually, literally around the world. Okage sama de, and we turn it back to our co-host, Corey and Chad, to lead you into the next segment. Thank you. Thanks, Darlene. I love your Baby Yoda, or spoilers for the Mandalorian if you're watching, Grogu mask. Corey, those names went a lot faster without having to wait for everyone to gosh roll. But seriously, thank all of you who helped make this event possible. I hear we were the backup co-hosts. We weren't even the first choices. Um, then who was? It was our siblings, Casey and Kenton, but they were too busy or something, so they picked us instead. I think we did all right, though. For our last segment, we are honored to learn more about the Stockton Bukio Taiko. We might even have a, per a performance for you. If you're interested in joining, there will be a link provided in the chat. We are Stockton Bukio Taiko. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Debbie Nakade, and I've been a member of Stockton Bukio Taiko for about 15 non-consecutive years. I'd like to tell you a little about our group and how it was started. In early 1990, a small group led by James Kochi and under the direction and guidance of Reverend David Matsumoto discussed the feasibility of forming a Taiko group at the Buddhist Church of Stockton. The introduction of traditional Japanese drumming was thought to be an activity that could promote the understanding of Buddhism an appreciation for the art of music, and discipline training for the participants. In May of that same year, the first meeting took place with 14 church members in attendance. Reverend Matsumoto had contacted Reverend Mas Kodani of the Senshin Buddhist Church in Los Angeles. Reverend Kodani, a well-known Taiko instructor, conducted a workshop in Stockton. He shared his knowledge and materials accumulated over 20 years of Taiko experience. Using the framework from the Senshin group and in the spirit of Buddhist teachings, Stockton Bukyo Taiko was born. The first practice session was in June. The group used old tires tied to folding chairs, a piece of plywood nailed to the edge of the tire to simulate the sound made when striking the rim of a drum, wooden dowels for bachi. By September, the group had grown to over 26 members and the affiliation with the Buddhist Church of Stockton was formalized with the development of organizational bylaws and the election of officers. But it was obvious 
that the lack of funding to procure drums and equipment was an obstacle. Special contributions from church members and other affiliated organizations made it possible to build Taiko from scratch. This effort was led by Mas Ishihara, who had the knowledge, the skills, the time, and the contacts to purchase wine barrels and cowhides for drum heads. Moss designed, built, and assembled the equipment needed to skin the barrels. Even the nails were handmade. The first Tyco built by the group bears the names of the original members and was presented to Reverend Matsumoto as a gift. I'll now hand off to Chris Kubo, who will continue with the group's history. Thank you, Debbie. The members continue to develop their skills through diligent practice and workshops presented by San Jose Taiko and Sacramento Taikodan. In January 1991, at the temple's Honko service and New Year celebration, Stockton Bukyo Taiko had its first public performance. There were 32 members who participated in that inaugural performance with Reverend Matsumoto. It was an intergenerational and family-oriented group. Since that first public performance in 1991, Stockton Bukyo Taiko has performed at many churches of different faiths and at civic functions from Sacramento to Merced. Although participation in the group is open to the public with no restrictions as to race, age, gender, ethnic or religious background, the group has maintained its original Buddhist nature and purpose through bylaws, policies, and practice format. In September 1995, Reverend David Matsumoto was assigned to the Institute of Buddhist Studies in Berkeley, California. The group continued to flourish under the leadership of Earl and Adele Fox, two members who were learning the art of taiko from Tiffany Tamaribuchi of Sacramento Taikodan. Since many Cortez Hoakai members were interested in learning taiko, a second practice session was established in Cortez in 1996. This group was facilitated by adult members who attended both practices in Cortez and Stockton to help maintain continuity. The Cortez group continued through 2007 when the majority of the youth had graduated from high school. However, they all returned to play during Obon for several years. In 2006, 15 years after its inception, Stockton Bukyo Taiko continued to thrive with almost 40 members. The group performed Asia Naika at the church's 100th year celebration with guidance and participation from Yumi Ishihara and PJ Hirabayashi. The organization has returned to Reverend Matsumoto's vision of a circle group, where no individual is the leader and every member takes ownership of some aspect of the practice. Chris Bergstrom of the OWN Ensemble had been contracted to work with the members to help develop skills and encourage the writing of new pieces. Christy Oshiro spent a good part of a year helping the group with various skills and songs. Through the years, Stockton Bukyo Taiko is truly fortunate and grateful to have had workshops conducted by friends from the generous Taiko community. And now, Kiono Kishi will speak more about recent developments of Stockton Bukyo Taiko. Thank you, Chris. In this era of the pandemic, Stockton Bukyo Taiko continues to meet weekly over Zoom. It's not nearly as satisfying as playing the drums together, but it has kept us connected. During this time, we are putting more attention on our roots by refocusing on the Buddhist values of interdependence, impermanence, compassion, humility, and gratitude. In an effort to work with these values, be creative, and find a way to deepen our connection to one another, we are creating a piece, the COVID blues. Each drummer has contributed a rhythm to the group and we are in the process of forming them into a song. Doing this over Zoom is really a challenge and sometimes a struggle. However, we are finding that it is also exciting and energizing as we are able to creatively gather in small breakout groups to transform that chaos of many rhythms into a song that contains a bit of each of us. In some ways, the song is representative of our group of over 20 members. 
We are all very different and each person has individual strengths, weaknesses, and talents. Our interdependence is clear as members must and do share their strengths and talents in order to take care of the organizational and creative aspects of Stockton Bukio Taiko, and more importantly, to support one another. As a circle group, we have chosen not to have a teacher or one leader, but through perseverance, hard work on acceptance that change is inevitable and a sense of humor, we have formed a successful structure out of the chaos of many individuals and Stockton Bukio Taiko has now celebrated its 30th anniversary. We are a group of Taiko players who have been able to make drums, make lifelong friends, and spread the joy of Taiko with the community. It is only through the church's generosity that we have been able to continue to grow, evolve, and share the power and spirit of Taiko. Thank you, Stockton Buddhist Church, for making all of this possible.
We are so grateful to the Stockton Buddhist Church for their support all of these years, providing us a wonderful place to practice and store our equipment. So we hope that you'll join us now and make a donation today. To learn more about our group, we are online at StocktonBukioTaiko.org. Thank you. Well, that concludes the 2020 Stockton Buddhist Temple virtual fundraiser. We would like to send a tremendous thank you to Susan Bruni, a member of the Stockton Bukio Taiko, who has been a tremendous help in getting this stream put together. Most definitely, Corey. Her video expertise helped us all come to you at home in crystal clear quality. If we weren't, it was your Wi-Fi, not us. To everyone at home watching, we wanna thank you again so much for your support. If you would like to donate or purchase a shirt, the link will be provided in the chat. Please, 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 as much as you can, any amount is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to join us for our Sunday services, you are more than welcome to. If you have any questions about services, Buddhism, or interested in any study classes, please email the temple. The email can also be found in the live chat below. We also have a Facebook and a YouTube channel in order, uh, in order for everyone to stay updated on the temple's latest events. Links to those platforms will be posted in the live chat now. Once again, thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. We hope you all learned a few new things. We hope everyone has a safe and happy holidays. Please remember to wear a mask and maintain proper social distancing when you are going out in public. We will get through these tough times by all doing our part. We hope to see you in person soon. Happy New Year.